I think the best possible way to show the power of React portals is on this example. Here we have a very simple card component with some welcome text and info button. But usually the problem is when you have this kind of components is if you have a tooltip or a drop down or a model that is coming out of the card component it usually gets cut off because in most cases these kind of components have CSS overflow property set to hidden. The best possible solution for this problem is to render this tooltip element outside of this card component and outside of the root element. Now let's see how we can use React portals to solve this problem. Code with Sloba. The first thing which we need to add is we need to add additional div inside of the index file in the public folder. This div will be used to render our tooltip element. So inside of the index.html file below the root element I will just copy paste and add additional div. For this one I will give an id of portal. To create react portal we will use create portal method from react dom. So we need to import on the very top of our file react dom from react dash dom. Now inside of the app component we can just replace our tooltip component with a react portal. To do that let's open up the curly braces and inside of the curly braces let's call react dom dot create portal. This method receives two arguments. The first one is the element that we want to create and the second one is the element where we want to append our newly created component. So now I will just simply place the tooltip component inside of the create portal method. And as a second argument, I will use document.getElementById and I will select the portal ID which we created inside of the index.html file. Now if we check on the browser itself, we can see that the tooltip element is not being cut off anymore. And if we inspect the elements from the developer tools, we can see that our element is being rendered inside of the portal div and not inside of the root div. The only problem that we have at this moment is that our component is not being rendered next to our info button. To solve this problem, we can just simply take the coordinates of the info button and pass those coordinates to our tooltip. Using these coordinates, we can place our tooltip component next to our info button. So in our app component, let's add additional use state hook. This hook will hold the coordinates for our tooltip element. We can name the variable simply chords and the method for updating this variable set chords. Below that, we can create a new function. I will name it simply handle click. This function will receive one argument, which is the target element. On this React target element, we can use getBoundingClientRect method and to get the top and the left position of our clicked element. So let's store it inside of the rect variable and just call target.getBoundingClientRect. Now we can save the values of this element inside of the chords variable and pass that to our tooltip component. So let's call the setCords function from the useState hook and as an argument pass the object. This object will have two properties, left and top, and it will serve as a styled object. For the left, we can just type in rect.x and use the x position. For the top, let's use rect.y and add additional margin so it's not overflowing the button itself. I will use 25 for this case. And just below that, use the setShowToolTip to toggle our tooltip. Here I will just reverse the state of the current tooltip. Now on the tooltip component add additional chords parameter and pass this chords variable that we just created. Inside of our tooltip component we will receive this property inside of the property list. And now inside of our style property we want to create new object and this structure model styles in our chords object. Just make sure to name the properties correctly. And now the last piece of the puzzle is that we need to call our hand click method. So inside of the info button in the on click method, instead of just toggling the show tooltip, we will call the hand click method and we will pass the event target as an argument. 
Now if we open the browser and if we click on the info button, we can finally see that our tooltip is at the right position and it's not being cut off. Now we could improve this implementation, as if we resize our window, we can see that the position of the model is getting off. And also if we had additional content and we had scroll on this page, we would need to add a scroll offset. Additional great feature of Portal and very interesting fact is even though this component is being rendered outside of the root element, in the React component tree it's still being rendered inside of this card component. So what this means is that the features like context and event bubbling are still being available even though this component in the DOM itself is not being rendered as a child of the card component. And how we can prove this concept is simply firing an event from the tooltip itself and catching it in the card component. So in the app component on the wrapper div, let's add onClick method. This is the wrapper div of our card component. The only thing that I want to do here is to do a single console log. And let's say hello from card. Now let's open our browser again. Let's open the developer tools and clear the console. Now if we click on the info button and open the tooltip, you can see if we keep clicking on the tooltip itself, we will get the logs from the card component. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.